Good morning. I see you out there. I do. Um, let's, how about we, you want to do a little singing? We'll do some singing. Let's do something all of us Lutherans like to do, and that's learn a new song, okay? All right. I wrote this song for me, but uh, uh, I, think you, I think you'll be able to relate to it really well, too. Let's sing together. Your grace changed my life. Your grace set me free. Your grace paved the road so I can live eternally. The best of all the blessings I've received is your grace. Your grace. Let's sing that chorus again, okay? Your grace changed my life. Your grace set me free. Your grace paved the road so I can live eternally. The best of all the blessings I've received is your grace. Your grace. If I could take the many gifts you've offered me and pile them all together, I know I would see the greatest gift is love that I'm not worthy of, but still you give to me abundantly. of all the blessings I've received is your grace, your grace. There was a time when my life made no sense to me, confused and all alone, I wandered aimlessly. Sin showed me I was lost, but you showed me the cross. When Jesus paid the price to rescue me. Blessings I've received is your grace, your grace. The best of all the blessings I've received is your grace, your grace. I think you did that song as, as well as the first service did it, so I don't know if that's saying anything, but uh, maybe you guys need to pick it up a notch. I don't know, maybe. No, it's great. Let's pray. Lord, we are grateful for your grace that you give to us so freely, and not that we've earned it or deserved it, but you give it to us. It's unmerited favor, and so we thank you for that grace. We want to celebrate that, Lord. And and uh, rejoice in it and uh, give you all the thanks and the praise for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I'm not much of a preacher. I'm more of a storyteller, so I'm going to tell you my story. It's a, it's a great story to tell. I um, got a chance to go on a mission trip uh, many years ago to uh, Russia and uh, not to the big cities, you know, like uh, 
you know, the big cities in Russia, Moscow and all that. But uh, this was a little town on the outskirts. Uh, in fact, if you look at a map of Alaska and you look over to the, to the left of Alaska across the Bering Strait, you'll see uh, the Chuchotka region of the Russian Far East. And this is, uh, oh, there's a little town called La Vrentia. We flew into Providenia and then went to La Vrentia to this little, um, little village, uh, poor little village. Uh, I don't care what kind of house you live in, you live in a better house than anybody who lives in La Vrentia, okay? Uh, family I stayed with was a mom and dad and two kids and they, uh, mom and dad slept on the uh, sofa out, they pulled it out and uh, they lived in a one bedroom apartment and the, the two kids, Slava and Ira, slept in the one bedroom. The Slava was an 11 year old boy and he slept on a mattress that was full of old rags and old clothes and, and Ira was, slept on a little bed that was a chair that folded out into a bed and then she folded it back up the next day. They didn't have a whole lot of nice food to eat like us. They basically had reindeer meat. That was the basic meat. And you can cook reindeer a lot of ways, but none of them taste real good. So, um, But they had no, uh, you know, they didn't have a lot of nice clothes to wear like we have. And uh, the roads in town were just uh, were dirt roads and stone roads. And so you didn't have many cars. And some people rode bicycles, but most people walked uh, throughout La Vrentia, even in the winter when it got to be 60 below zero, they uh, bundled up and uh, went out and uh, ran their lives. And they were wonderful people. You had to be careful to compliment them on something because if you did, they'd, they'd give you what you complimented them on. You know, like you'd see some drapes. Oh, those are beautiful drapes. You know, they'd be up on a little stool taking the drapes down and giving them to you. So, uh, but they, uh, they didn't have a whole lot of conveniences like we have, but the, and also they didn't have uh, any churches in this town. And the missionaries had just gotten over there a couple of years before this, so we got a chance to go and to help start the first church in La Vrentia. And they meet in houses, and they still meet today. And, and uh, we baptized a couple of people while we were there. We met so many of them. They were just wonderful people of faith, some of them. You know, we're very strong. They wanted to be strong people of faith. My friend Vasily was, he wanted to be a man of great faith. He heard about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and how they, you know, they, uh, they trusted in the Lord. And so he wanted, he wanted to be like that. And, and Rosa, Rosa was uh, um, the main anti-American propagandist in town and came to the first meeting the missionaries had just to kind of disrupt the meeting. But she uh, heard about Jesus and she gave her heart to Jesus. So, uh, And then you had... Uh, Oh, my friend Garman, this is a young Russian guy. He was uh, in his 20s. He says, oh, I don't know about this God thing. You know, these miracles you talk about. This is, uh, miracles are hard to come by in Chuchotka. He said, you know, we have, uh, I have good job. I have beautiful wife. I have wonderful child. And he said, uh, I don't need this God to take care of me. I have the government to take care of me. And, so uh, we said, well, we'll pray for you especially, Garman, okay? And because uh, he needed a miracle, okay? So we uh, met these people. We had a wonderful time. We did a couple of concerts for them. We took food, medicine, clothing, Bibles, and uh, took over some T-shirts that had John 3.16 written out on the front in, in Russian. And uh, some of these kids, that was the first time they'd ever heard the gospel was through a T-shirt. So it was a wonderful time. And when you're doing God's work, of course, it always goes smoothly, doesn't it? It's just smooth. It's like marriage. Piece of cake, right? It's a piece of cake. Having children, that's just a, boy, that's a fun ride every day, you know? I have five kids. I understand that. So the reason we have five is because we did not want to have six, that's for sure. So. so, you know, you come back from a trip like that and, and you're rejoicing and you're, you, all the good things you got to do and the people you got to meet and everything and. So we flew in our little twin-engine Piper Navajo. There were seven of us on board, and we flew from La Vrentia to Providenia and had our passport stamped there. And then we flew from there to St. Lawrence Island in the United States to get our American passport stamped, and then we started flying from there towards Nome, Alaska, out over the Bering Sea, this ocean that uh, freezes over solid during the winter. And during the summer, it thaws out. When we were going over, we were going over in August, so it's, it's thawed out. It's, the water temperature is about 36 or 38 degrees, somewhere in there. But it's thawed out. And you can, you know, I mean, you can get in the water, but if you stay in it for about 10, 15 minutes, you'll probably die of hypothermia. 
So we're flying over that water and can't see any land at all anywhere around you. All you see is that cold gray ocean below us. And I looked up to the gas gauge on the instrument panel. And the gauge had stuck at a half a tank. And all of a sudden it unstuck and it went down just like that, down below quarter tank. Now we knew we were in trouble because there are no gas stations up there. I mean, I looked and there were none. And so we prayed. And that's what you do. The, the, the problem persists or the pain or whatever. And you, what do you do? You go, you go to God and you pray. We said, Lord, we're in your hands. No matter what happens, we are in your hands. And we kept flying and praying. And we finally saw some land out ahead and thought that, well, we may make it after all. And then the right engine ran out of fuel. So now we're flying on one engine. And we're still praying, though. We're going, okay, Lord, well, we're in your hands. And, and by the way, Lord, is it, you, you remember the story where you changed the water into wine? If there's, do you think there's a way you could make air into gasoline? So I, I prayed that. I really prayed that. But the Lord chose to do other miracles that night because about five minutes after the first engine went out, 27 miles from Nome, 3,500 feet in the air, still out over the Bering Sea, the left engine sputtered and quit. And we got no more engines and we're going down. Now some of you got that look on your face like, oh wow, I hope he makes it. <laughs> I do make it, all right, so I'll just let you know. <laughs> but it wasn't without some difficulty. I mean, he took it down and he took it down on the ocean. The waves were three to six foot high. It's not a smooth place to land. The thing came in, dragged the tail, and banged it down. Flaps up, gear up. 90 miles an hour, we hit that water. I mean, it was a jolt. And I remember flying forward, and stuff was flying all over the cabin. And, and I hit my head on the side of the plane, and I broke my glasses, and I got a cut above my eye right here. It was a big cut, too. It was, oh, it was huge. It was just a gaping wound. It was... Uh, <laughs> this is where we usually take the offering, Pastor. <laughs> We'll forego that. No, actually, I got a cut right here above my eye that didn't even bleed, okay? But God did break my glasses. I'll tell you why in a second. We came to a stop. Everybody said, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So we get out onto the wing, and we didn't have any, you know, flotation device. We didn't have any life jackets or seat cushions or inflatable raft. But we had 20 empty five-gallon gas cans. And they were about that tall, about that big around. They were empty and sealed, and we were taking it back to be filled up with fuel for our other planes that were still back in Russia. So we said, let's go. Let's take the cans. Let's just take them out there. We'll float with those. And so we got out on the wing, and people got in the water, and we were tossing them cans. And, and I remember I being on the wing when this plane started going down. It started filling up, and then it went down the nose first, and came back up again, and then went down, and I pushed myself away from the plane, and there went the plane. And now here we are floating in the, in the water, holding on to these 36... 36, 38 degree water, we're holding on these gas cans. And we don't know if any help's coming or not. And, and when, you go, when you go through the pain and the problems and the difficulties, the challenges in life, and you call out to God, this God who has already rescued you by, by sending a son to die on the cross, and you, you wonder if he's going to be there, you realize at this point in life, you're either going to see him personally or you are going to see his handiwork. We got a chance to see his handiwork that day. And so we floated around, and the waves were such they pushed us apart, so we couldn't even see each other after a while. We got so far apart. But the water in the ocean out there that far out, is, it, it doesn't even make noise. In fact, we, just, we, just, we could hear each other shouting to each other very easily. So we shouted out words of encouragement and survival instructions. And that's what the church is supposed to shout out to each other, right? Words of encouragement. Survival instructions. Then you heard somebody way over there, way over there go, God is our refuge and strength, the very present help in trouble. Somebody over there goes, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Somebody over there goes, be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you all the time. That's why we study the word and we hide it in our hearts. In a crisis, 
in, in the, the problems and the pain, you want to have this word of God. You go to the word of God, the promises of God, that he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He'll be with you always, even to the ends of the earth. Folks, I've been to the end of the earth. And when I got there, he was there, just like he promised. And if he can be there for me, he can be there for you. And so we shouted out these verses to each other. But that's what we do. We shout out the promises. We pray to our God. And he provides the solutions. So I'm, we just, we floated. That was all we did. And we, we shouted some more. And then some more Bible verses. And then, then Brian, I don't know, Brian couldn't think of anything to say. But I don't know, he just goes, um, this is still the day the Lord has made. We will still rejoice and be glad in it. And there's six other people in the water going, I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, you don't feel like rejoicing when you're going through this. But what's the word say? The word says rejoice in the Lord always. So we even sang a couple of songs in the water. I'm very happy to say they were both my songs too, okay? So if we ever do make a movie, you know, and they play those two songs, I make seven cents every time they play that movie. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, we floated around for a little while, and about 10 minutes after the crash, when the first plane came overhead, all right, so we saw this thing come over, and we were excited. We saw this thing, and we were waving, and we're shouting, you know, like he could hear us, right? He flew right over us and never saw us. But then he came back again, and he kind of circled back, and he came over, and he came in a little lower, and now he saw us. And he said, there are survivors in the water. And so they sent helicopters from there. So this guy starts circling around, and we're excited, right? And then a second plane showed up. Yeah, and he's, flo he's circling us too. So we know they found us, and they, we're, we're excited, you know? All right, okay. 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 What do we do? Do we jump? What do we do here? You know, I'm a Lutheran. I like to have it all written out in front of me, you know? Now, finally, over the horizon, about 25 minutes after the crash, the first helicopter showed up. Great sound. That fluff, 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 fluff. Here he comes over. But it's not one of those rescue helicopters, you know, with the hoist or the basket or something like that. This is, this is a survey helicopter. He's got one firefighter and uh, one rope hanging out the side about this long. Yeah. Firefighter's got his thermal suit on and... And uh, they're going to, no basket to pick you up or anything. You just got to hover up and down with the waves and reach down and start pulling people in. And the firefighter brought seven body bags with him because he'd never pulled out a live person before. But you never limit God because God can do anything. So they, here they come after us, and they started picking people up, and they got Carrie in first. Carrie was in the water about 35 minutes. And then Dave Anderson was in 40 minutes. And then Dave Cochran, the pilot, he was in about 45 minutes. They took those three off to an island a couple of miles away. Then they came back and they got me. I was in the same area with this lady, so uh, Pam. So I pushed her over towards the skid, and they grabbed her, and they pulled her in. Then they came over and got me. And I remember this thing coming down, and it's loud, and it's kicking up those water. It's awful tasting water. It's, it's this salt water, ocean water. Yuck. And I'm just, but I'm not going to give up now. And sure enough, I reached up and grabbed that rope. And the guy grabbed my coat. And then I let go of the cans and kind of tucked my arm under the skid. You know, so now I'm, 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 and they, I'm they pick my leg. I'm kind of laying on the skid like this. All right. And the firefighter leans down and goes, are you on? I said, uh-huh. We can't get you inside. We got to go. Well, this is my first helicopter ride ever. And uh, I, I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to ride that way. And, but I'm not going to give up. So, I, you know, I hung on and I, they hung on to me and I hung on for dear life. And they took us to the island. And they couldn't drop us off on the shoreline of the island. No, they have to drop us off on the top of the island. 760 feet above the ocean. I'm hanging on the outside of the helicopter flying up the top of this island. And so they let us off there. And I, you know how high this is? It's about a 60-story building. 
You ever seen the arch in St. Louis? This island is 120 feet higher than the arch. And this is why God broke my glasses in the crash. So I didn't know how high this was, all right? And, the, you know, they dropped us off, and they said, we got to get the other two. We said, okay, go ahead. And Pam and I were in about 55 minutes in this water. And the second helicopter showed up then. And they picked up Barb, and she was in about 60 minutes. And then Brian was in about 70 minutes. And they got us all up to the top of the island. They put us in the helicopters, flew us off to Nome. The ambulances picked us up there, took us to the hospital, and then they warmed us up best they could. Five of us were released from the hospital that night. The other two were released the next day. The FAA says that we're the only crash to have ever landed in the Bering Sea where they've had any survivors. And we are the longest to survive in water that cold without a thermal suit. And for that fact alone, we were made honorary members of the Nome Polar Bear Club. <laughs> Why does God do this? Why does God take us through these problems and, and, and pain and, and difficulties and challenges in life? What, why, is, why is marriage so difficult a lot of times? Why is the family, you know, why is it so tough sometimes? Why do we have troubles at job or at school or something like that? And we just don't even know if we're going to go through it. Well, you know, a lot of people ask me after this, they said, well, do you think this incident was to get you closer to God? And I said, no. I was real close to God before this. And he said, well, how about getting you closer to your family? I said, no, I was real close to my family too. But I, I think I finally realized that, that God had given me this opportunity to stand and sing and speak in front of a lot of people. And, and everywhere I went, I, I could see people who were going through struggles. And I got to tell you, I'm, I, the first service is no different. I'm looking at some faces and some of you... So it's right on your face. You're going through some, something right now. And you're wondering if there's a rescuer out there. And believe me, if you're not going through something right now, you probably have just come through something. Or as we used to say in Tennessee, y'all be fixing to go through something pretty soon. You know? Cause, and everybody goes through these things. Nobody is immune to this. Everybody goes through life, life like this. Nobody goes through unscathed. And you're, you're probably wondering at some time in life, is, is there a rescuer out there? And if there is, will he rescue me? Well, I want you to know that I'm here today as living proof that there is a rescuer, and his name is Jesus. And if you trust in him, he will see you through anything. Now, I can't promise you a dramatic rescue like ours. You may not get a movie deal out of yours. You know, we're, our, we're planning on making a movie out of ours, and it's going to be very cool. They're going to pay a lot of money to get that Leonardo DiCaprio guy to play me, you know. <laughs> well, we look so much alike, you know. I said that one time, and somebody said, you know, it's a shame that John Candy guy passed away, you know. <laughs> I said, thank you. I resemble that remark. No, I can't promise you a dramatic rescue. I can't promise you that God will rescue in your time schedule or even in the way that you want to get rescued. But his word, let's go back to his word. His word says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways. All your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Now make no mistake about it, if I would have died in that crash that night, I'd have still been rescued. God already provided that rescue on the cross at Calvary. But I didn't die. I got a chance to come back. I don't know, maybe it's just so I could come back here today. Because somebody needed to hear that if God can rescue us, he can rescue you. You trust in him. You go through the challenges. You look to him. You pray to him. Even if it's a simple prayer like, Lord, save me. And you go to his word where he promises that he'll never leave you. That he'll be with you always. And he will show you the solutions. It may not be easy. It probably won't be. But he will surround you with wisdom and courage and strength and other people who will lift you up. My wife just went through a bout with cancer. And it was uh, 15 months worth of chemo and surgery and radiation and more chemo. And it was awful. But during that time, her Facebook friends doubled in number. 
the cards and the notes that we got, the calls that we got, the people from just the church and everything that brought meals. We had noodles cooked so many ways, let me tell you. <laughs> but it was great, and they came, and one couple came, and they, they had both lost their first spouses to cancer. And they knew what we were going through. And they stepped out beyond their faith, and they said, let's go and talk to these people. And they did. They listened to God. And so today, rest assured that your God loves you. He loves you so much that he is holding you right now in his hand. And he will never let you go. He will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. And you will go through the challenges in this world, but he will not leave you. He will be there with you. And whether you make it through or whether you die on the spot or whatever, you hold on to him because that's where the miracle relies. One of the things that we're very blessed to be able to do right now is to start making some film, doing some film work. And one of the movies that we want to make is the plane crash film. The time is right now to do it. And so, Lord willing, and the creek don't rise, uh, December 22nd, 2016, we will be releasing this movie, A, St A Step Beyond My Faith, The Bering Sea Plane Crash and Rescue Miracle. And in the two last scenes of this movie, uh, are, it's just so great about being able to tell a story that as you can say this is a true story and that we're in the hospital and I get with Dave Anderson and I say where do we go from here what do we do with our lives and Dave said I think we need to tell the story and we need to tell this because it's a story of God's grace and we need to tell that and then from there the scene shifts back to Russia and the next day after our plane crash, there was a group of Russians who came to the missionaries who were still there. And they said, we want to be, we want to be baptized. And the missionary said, well, why now? He said, because we heard about the Americans and we heard about their plane crash. And if the God of the Americans can rescue them from that ocean, then he is the true God. And from the back of the group steps my friend Garman, this 20-some-year-old who wanted to rely on his government, who said that miracles were hard to come by in Chuchotka, came from the back of the group and said, I want to be baptized too. I want to be a man of great faith. Of course, at that point, the movie ends. Theme song comes up, sung by Faith Hill. It has to be Faith Hill, doesn't it? Come on. What do you think? Lady Gaga is going to do this? What do you? And God is lifted up. His son Jesus is praised. And we are all encouraged to continue to serve him through the good times and through the bad times, the tough times, the easy times. God bless you as you do that too. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, speak to us. Speak to us about stepping outside of our faith. Reassure us every day that you are our rescuer. You are the one. You are the one who has saved us despite of ourselves. You've offered your love to us freely. Lord, what, what do you want us to do? How, could we, how can we serve you? What else could we do with our lives, Lord, when you have given us everything? For everyone today here, too, who is going through the challenges, going through the tough times, Lord, help them to be able to look up to you and to, to see your face and to hear your voice and to be filled with the courage that only you could give, the, the faith, and surround us all with with people who will help us through these times, Lord. Oh, Lord, thank you for loving us that much. We pray all this in Jesus' name. We pray believing and expecting great things. Amen. Amen? amen. See, Lutherans can say amen, too, I think, if, if we get organized, I think so.